a cover killer nation as you know part of my job is not only to bring you album reviews from the present but also to infuse the past and in the past couple of months I've also included classic album reviews and things like that but this is actually going to be a new album review that's going to blend the old with the new in the form of a history lesson uh, Sympathetic Residence by Arch Matthäus is the album that we're going to be speaking about today the reason why this is going to be blending the old with the new, kind of fusing it together, is because Archimatheos is actually just the first incantation of Fate's Warning. Now, of course, Fate's Warning, over the course of the past, oh, 23, 24 years, as a band, has been basically Fate's Warning with Ray Adler, as opposed to John Arch. John Arch was the original singer of Fate's Warning, and uh, Jim Matthäus was the original and still current guitar player. So... Why is this important? Because John Arch started and did the, first, uh, the vocals for the first three albums that Fate's Warning released in the 1980s. And now, he has teamed up with, basically, Fate's Warning once again in order to execute a new album. John Arch was out of music for about, oh, a period of 16, 17 years until he released his first solo album, which is entitled A Twist of Fate, which came out in the early part of the 2000s. This reunited him with Jim Matthäus and had him work with other musicians as well, including James LeBray. Now, what's interesting about this is that essentially this is Fate's Warning only with John Arch as opposed to Ray Adler at the, uh, the vocal help. So it's interesting in that regard that basically this could almost be released under the pseudonym or the name of Fate's Warning, but because of legal reasons... And everything like that, and because Ray Elder hadn't been kicked out of the band, there's nothing like that going on. Fate's Warning still is planning on continuing on with Ray and things like that. In fact, they have a new album that's supposed to come out in 2012. Instead, they had to do something a little bit different. So what they did, they decided to go with the two names, and I guess you could call the most prominent, Arch and Matthäus, combined it together to get this release. This is a six-track affair clocks in at about 55 to 6 minutes. And if you remember the material that these guys were able to put out in the early 1980s, there was a strong Iron Maiden feel to it, there was a lot of mythology to it, there was a lot of progressive metal to it. That progressive side is still there, that Iron Maiden side only present in the fact that John Arch's vocals soar still, like the Air Raid Siren Bruce Dickinson. This is something where his vocals have definitely not deteriorated in the 30 or so years, however long that you wish to call it, ever since he last was a prominent metal singer. And the mythology, the mythos now is surrounding more what you would consider to be more of a religious overtone. Six tracks on this album are majestically written. They're very well constructed, not to mention they've been tediously and meticulously combed over with the production and the expertise that these guys have been able to deliver now for about 30 years. Of course, the only lone differential here is that John Arch had been out of music for a very long period of time, came back and released his two-track solo CD, and then once again, you didn't hear from him until now. And the John Arch Timotheus Project, which is basically Fate's Warning plus John Arch, really is an impressive work. This is something that, honestly... It took me by surprise. These are six tracks that not only are majestically written, but they're also wonderfully represented whenever you listen to this album. This is an album where you're not going to find yourself going back to just one or two particular songs. You're going to find yourself wanting to listen to the whole entire album once again. This is an album that blends both very good tone, very good pace, and also flawless musicianship. And like I said, this is something that came out of nowhere for me. Because typically, whenever projects of this nature come out, they are good, don't get me wrong, but most of the time, these are projects that never really have any sort of implication whenever it comes to end-of-the-year lists or anything like that. But this was so surprising. This really took me by, you know, such shock and sent chills down my spine to the period and to the extent that I have to say that look for this album in late December whenever album of the year comes up. This is an album that blends a lot of fantastic elements. John Arch's vocals are still so haunting. The highs at which he's able to reach, 
and the way in which he's able to melodically articulate the words that he has written down is just nothing short of breathtaking. The musicianship is not one where it naturally has to be virtuosic in order for you to really be impressed by this. This is something where the driving melodies, the very well-executed hooks, and the musicianship and the songcraft in general just pull you in and take you on a ride unlike anything that you've ever really experienced this year here in 2011, this side of the new Dream Theater album. And it's funny that both of these albums were basically released right around the same time. These are two albums that could almost be seen as companion albums in a sense, where Dream Theater is entering a new chapter in their career with Mike Mancini as their drummer, whereas you see John Arch coming back and essentially teaming back up with his old mates in Fate's Warning in order to create a new project, a new just beast of an album, a fantastic release. Progressive metal is something that I've not spoken about very highly this year, with the exception of projects from bands such as Symphony X and the Devin Townsend Project. These are now two releases within the period of this month that have just blown me away. If you have not checked out this album, if you're afraid to check out this album, if you don't really know about this album, if this is something that hasn't even come across your wire, maybe you heard that it was coming out, but you figured, like, who the fuck is that? Who? Definitely investigate this album. It's definitely worth your time. It's worth the experience, and it's going to leave you changed. This is an album that gets a very high mark for me. It gets a 9 out of 10. It's not necessarily just because I love progressive music. It's not necessarily just because I'm a Fates Warning fan. But because this is an album that, honestly, I didn't have very high expectations for. I figured it would be very solid, but I didn't think it would be anything remarkable, anything magnificent, and it completely changed my view. This was a six-track experience that I hope to replicate and reshare and relive over and over again for a very long time, and I'm going to have plenty of time to do that. That's all I really have to say about that, Cover Killer Nation. Sometimes things will shock you. Sometimes things will just leave you baffled. This is one of those experiences.